Deuteronomy chapter number 7. This is going to be the Torah portion this morning. And um, what a good Torah portion, amen? If you obey, if you'll hearken, if you'll listen, and if you'll do. Deuteronomy chapter number 7. Might help if I turn there. I turn to Numbers chapter 7. That won't do us no good this morning, will it? It says, When the Lord your God shall bring you into the land where you are to go to possess, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations which are greater and mightier than you, and when the Lord your God shall deliver them before you, and you shall smite them, and utterly destroy them, you shall make a co no covenant with them, nor shall you show mercy to them. Neither shall you make marriages with them, your daughters you shall not give to the, their sons, nor his daughter shall you take unto your son. For they will turn away your heart from following me, that they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. Thus shall you deal with your, them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For you are a holy people unto the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set His love upon you, to choose, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the fewest of all. But because the Lord loved you, and because you would keep the oath which He had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, and from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, therefore, now know therefore that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repays them that hate him to their face and destroys them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to the face. I read that, you know, I had the children this week. I was back in there with the children and, and I know the, the I think Brother Ken had the class out here and it went well. But listen to what he says. You're a holy people. Ain't that the same thing that the book of Peter says? We are a holy priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, people set apart and set aside. You and I today are called by God's grace to be what? A light to everywhere we go. Amen? Amen. Now, if you and I will hearken and listen and do the things that God says, He's promised us that none of the diseases that were in Egypt would cleave to our bodies and that we would be a special people above all the people upon the face of the earth. And think about yourself. The Lord said, I didn't choose you because you were many. He didn't choose us. The Apostle Paul says he didn't choose us because we were stronger or mightier than others or smarter or more intelligent. But the Bible says in Corinthians, he chooses what? The baser things, the weaker things, that he may confound the wise. And as I read that, I thought, how true it is. Man, I was messed up when the Lord found me. Amen. Amen. Are you guys awake this morning? Amen. I was messed up, right? I was in my sin. I was trapped. I could not get out. I wanted out, but then I didn't want out. Then I wanted out. Then I didn't want out again. And I found myself in bondage to my own self. And Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, came to me and rescued me and made me one of His people. Amen. And then he said, if you'll go, I'll go with you and I'll bless you all the way even until the end of the age. And now guess what he calls us to do? Be a holy people. A people that's set apart. A people where the light of God is shining. How many of you read the Torah portion this week? How many times over and over did God say, if you'll do this, I'll bless you, I'll keep you, I'll watch over you, I'll overshadow you. You'll be a peculiar treasure in my sight. You'll go, think about the generation that we live in. We, were, we went down to Pastor Scott's last night, and uh, he had like a worship night for the youth. And um, uh, 
uh, there was most of his congregation youth was there, and we took the children down and went down. They were talking about this generation. And I know I've said it many times, but David served his generation. David ministered to his generation. David did not succumb to the ways of his generation, but he stood out as a man anointed of God, even from a young age. And God blessed the man David and rose him up to be king even over all of Israel, but he served his generation. You and I are born in this day and time that we live to minister to this generation. And how good would it be if our life mirrors the blessings of God in all things? Our conduct, our word, our actions, our intentions are all focused and driven by the Spirit of God. And you and I are light on this world. Moses is getting ready to leave. He's given a charge again to the children of Israel. Listen, you're a special people. So how about you this morning? The vineyard, you're a special people. Amen. Called out. God has called us all kinds of different places, not only geographically, but even de denominationally. God has called us and he said, listen, you're a peculiar people. You're a special people. You're an anointed people to bring forth the praises of our God. And I wonder this morning. As you read through the Torah portion. You got giants in the land, you got things you face, you got things you don't understand, and God tells us what? Don't be afraid of them. Why? Because I, the Lord your God, am with you wheresoever you go. Your God is greater, amen? amen. Your God is greater. I don't know what it is you're facing, I don't know what it is you're looking at, but is there anything greater than our God? Nope. There's not, is there? And if you and I are walking in obedience to the revealed will of God in our life, we have confidence. And there's not anything that we cannot overcome, nor face, nor go through. But what happens is sometimes when we're not walking in that way, guess what happens? A cloud of doubt flies over. We don't have the confidence that we could have or would have. And therefore, we don't look to God as we should. But when you and I are doing what God says to do, and we're honoring Him in our hearts, what great confidence does God give us? Amen? He says in chapter 8, All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to you. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, to humble you, to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. And he humbled you and suffered you to be hungry and fed you with manna that, that you knew not, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Your raiment, your clothing did not grow old, neither did your foot swell these forty years. And you shall also consider in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in His ways and to fear Him. For the Lord your God brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of waters, of fountains, of deeps, of the springs, the valleys, of hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, of pomegranates, a land of oil and a land of honey, a land where you shall eat bread without scarceness, and you shall have not any lack of anything. A land whose stones are iron and whose hills you may dig brass. You know, sometimes it's good for us to reflect. A lot of the old Puritan writers who I like to read after, I love the Puritans. They say in times of season, the seasons of drought and, and spiritually drought and dryness, you're to reflect. So God's getting ready to take this group of people into the land. And He says, listen, remember the last 40 years, how I humbled you. I proved you. I saw what was in your heart and I let you, more importantly, see what was in your heart. That you might know what I'm bringing you into this land, not because you're a greater people, not because you've done everything right, but because God swore to Abraham, our father, that he would give him the land and they would possess it. Amen. And so you and I this morning are to reflect. 
What has God done in the last 40 years for you? Now, I've only been a Christian for about 20 years. No, 18 years. But I can remember some great times that God had to humble me and crush me and chastise me. And there's some things in my heart that I didn't know were there until God brought me into that season. And all of a sudden, I saw something coming out of my heart that I didn't like. And then when God brought me through, what is that to cause me to do? For me to remember... When I go in and I'm possessing the land that God promised me, I'm to know I didn't get here by anything by my own. I had to be brought by the Lord. Everything I know, the Lord taught me. Everything the Lord that I had, the Lord bought me. Amen? And so we are to remember the things that we've experienced and been brought through until this present time. And the old writer said this, If God done it in the past... He'll do it in the future. Amen. If you're struggling in the past and God reached down and He saved you and delivered you, what makes you think God won't do it again in your present circumstance or in the one that you're going to face? Amen. So remember, cast back your eye and look. All these things that happened to you, that God might prove you, humble you, and test you, that you might go in and possess the land. Chapter 9 says this, Hear, O Israel, you are to pass over this Jordan today. To go in and possess nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities great and fenced to the heavens. A people great and tall, the children of the Anakims are there, whom you know and whom you've heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak. Understand therefore this day that the Lord your God is He which goes over before you as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them. He shall bring them down before your face so that they drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. Speak not in your heart after that the Lord has, your God has cast them out from before you saying, For my righteousness the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations does the Lord drive them out from before me. Amen. Not for your righteousness nor for the uprightness of your heart Do you go to possess the land? But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God is driving them out from before you, that he may perform the word which the Lord swore unto your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God gives you not this land to possess it for your righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people. Remember and forget not how you provoked the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that you... From the day that you did depart out of the land of Egypt until the time that you came to this place, you have rebelled against the Lord. Also in Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath so that the Lord was angry with you and would have destroyed you. And Moses does what? He intercedes for the people of God. Verse 13 says, Furthermore, the Lord spoke unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Amen. So that's not the reason they went into the land. The reason they went into the land because God, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, God could swear by no greater. When he, God said, I swear, when he gave the word of his oath, it was a done deal. Amen. When he said to Abraham, I will give it to you and to your descendants after you, he promised with an oath, it's a done deal. So why are we going into the land? Because God swore it with an oath. Amen. Not because of our righteousness or, thank the Lord for our unrighteousness, or our rebellion, or our fault or failures, but because God has sworn with an oath, amen, Amen. that we'll enter into the land. So as we go out to the rest of the service today, think about that. What has the God of the Bible led you through the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years of your life or your experience? What are you to reflect on this morning as we're gathering before Him and God has set the Sabbath day apart that we might worship Him? What can God stir in your heart? Even the Apostle Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is within you. Amen? So Father, we give you this time. We bless you. We praise you. Lord, thank you for what you've done in our life. Lord, thank you for all that you've led us through, Lord. There were many things that come upon us that we would not have ourselves. But Father, you were faithful and you delivered us out of every one. And we stand here this day because you're good and because your mercy endures forever and forever. And we give you praise and honor and glory. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.